Other question I got real quick is, am I good wearing the maroon hoodie? They call this the quarantining tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> Now let's get to your presence on social media and clearly that's impactful in recruiting and we'll touch on that. But just from a personal admiration standpoint, every time I see Jay Ham tweet, I'm like, ah, man, that's how I wanted to say it. <laughs> it's just practice. What's your, your general strategy? It seems like just straightforward truth telling and don't at me at the end. The nice thing about Twitter is you have an opportunity to proofread your own thoughts. So you are able to put what thought that you want out there, but also using the proper context and the proper words. This is who we are. This is what you get, whether you are a student here, an athlete here, a fan here, an alum of Virginia Tech. And I think that it was important for me that we controlled the narrative of what's said about us and the perception of us. And I think that whether it's made a huge impact or not, I think remains to be seen. But at the very least, we are controlling the perception of us. Clearly, this is a unique situation, not in just the fact that we're in a pandemic and we're in a quarantine, but also you add in the fact that you're going into your first season in this, this role as defensive coordinator. Has that at times frustrated you in terms of I want to hurry up and do this. I, I want to get on the field. I want to get in a room with these guys and, and do the things that I want to do. Or how have you mentally approached that? There's definitely a level of frustration, and it's really because just of how we're wired. For us, it, it's been really trying to communicate with our players as much as we can uh, to try to implement the system. It's actually been good from the standpoint of we have to teach through voiceovers and we have to teach through Zoom. So we have to be really detailed and organized with how we present the information. I think the difficult thing for our kids is that they, like us, are creatures of habit and they want to be out there. They want to be being coached. They want to see how they're getting better or hear how they can get better. They want to compete. So that's the part that's frustrating. We may have to condense what we do with depending on the time that we get. And if that's the case, that's fine because what's most important is that we have 11 guys that can go execute a call. How much does it benefit you as you install, and it would have regardless of the circumstances, I would imagine, how many guys you have coming back in leadership roles? Oh, it's unbelievable. That's the, the blessing of all this for us in our program is that we have guys that not only have played a lot of snaps, but also are quick learners. In my experience, whether it be as a player or as a coach, your younger players learn most from the older players. They, they learn a lot from the coach, but I've seen it where young players learn the, the quickest, I should say, from the veteran players. The veteran players learn the most from the coach. So that's been really good. And I think, too, with these guys being in contact with each other outside of our presence, they're probably having side meetings where the veteran players are discussing what we just discussed as coaches, which can be good. And who are you most eager when you do get back on the field to see not only that they stayed ready, but use this time to advance and maybe become a bigger part of things than they were last year, even though you have so many guys returning? Yeah, I would say uh, just working front to back, I would say Josh Fuga and Narelle Pollard as a couple young D linemen. Uh, Amari Barno, Keyshawn Artis, Alan Tisdale at linebacker. And then in the secondary, Nadir Thompson, J.R. Walker, Nyquee Hawkins. They're quick learners and they've been exactly what we thought they would be as people. Very excited about seeing them out there. Still am excited, but hate for them and for us that they did miss spring. And I remember a couple of years ago talking to guys like Greg Strom and Terrell Edmonds about what it meant to them to be able to go against, it was Isaiah and Cam and Bucky and those guys in practice back in those days. But it seems like you've got another group like that that's really going to challenge your defense day in, day out, just here in Blacksburg. It's the best thing that could happen at a college program. If your program is operating the right way, then the offensive players are going out on the field and saying, if I don't bring my best, then I'm not making our defense their best and vice versa. And it's our job for each other to do that. I believe, truly believe our kids are genuinely dedicated to helping each other and to doing for each other. And that's the way we do it. We do it by competing every day, bringing our best, challenging people, talking some smack, 
forcing a guy to be at his best every snap or else he's going to be exposed. So I, I think that's healthy, and I think that that's when your program is really at the level you want it to be at. We share in common following a legend, just kind of a pillar type here at Virginia Tech, and, and there was a lot of conversation about is it still the lunch pail defense? Will they continue to – carry the lunch pail onto the field. And, and I know Fu has addressed it and Whip Babcock has talked about it. And I've talked about it to Bud, actually, and I know he's cool with it. But just wanted to get your thoughts on the level of respect that you have and how you've chosen to go forward with that. Bud Foster has been absolutely monumental for my life and for my career. So the level of respect that I will always have and ha have always had for him will never change. I used to sit next to the off or the defense in our team meeting room. when We had the elementary school divider before our team meeting room got upgraded. <laughs> and I would listen to him address the defense and I would be like juiced all the way up. And I'm in an offensive meeting and that's carried forward with me with how I try to address any players that I've coached and how I really try to live my life. So that lunch pail mentality will never go away. Going forward, the thing that I told the team after the press or the defense after the press release came out was Coach Foster built all of us to never worry about what's going on outside, to control what we can control, handle what we can handle. And the best way we can honor him is by playing harder and working harder and doing more for each other than anybody in the country. And in my own opinion, having the lunch pail with his name on it in our ring of honor or, or hall of fame circle, whatever we call that at the stadium to have a banner is to be held in the highest regard. I was talking to Greg Stroman the other day and Tim Settle happened to be hopping by his personal workout spot there. And, and he was talking about the brotherhood that is DBU. And it got me to thinking about the different generations of not just DBU, but the LPD yourself included. How much, I'm, I'm sure you've given a ton of thought to how you want to utilize those guys, your former teammates, friends, those that have come since and before uh, in continuing to build this thing? I think that any time that you can get someone who gave everything they had to this program when that pro this program was in the palm of their hands to come back and talk to our guys who are currently doing that, that it's always valuable. And just like with actual blood family, if you have anyone in that family that can speak to you about having experienced the time you're in and give you some knowledge or some wisdom or give you the true sense and the meaning of the pride that exists within that, that always creates value. And I think it's very inspiring for our guys to see just how much it means and also just how many people they can impact with it. You're at home. You've been at home. <laughs> Looks like you'll be at home for a while. And at home, you and Brittany are expecting another and you've already kind of got uh, uh, youngsters running around. What's the vibe like in the ham house right now? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. During the day, mom is doing the homeschooling aspect of things. Our son's in kindergarten. Uh, we got through the first trimester. We're in number two now. So she's gotten past the food aversions and the nausea. Um, and those things, but our kids are six and four. So they're just old enough to understand that there's a baby that will be coming and they're trying to, my, my son has already, he's been the older brother, but my daughter, especially who has a lot of alpha female in her, she's already ready to like take charge and be under control of all of us. Where do you rank in the hierarchy of who's running the house right now? Uh, I would say it goes mom, daughter, son, dog, dad. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to interact with the players just a little bit just to instill a level of uh, authority, I would imagine. That's like my wife tells me that that's the one place where you have say so. You're the man, Ham. Get back to it. Can't wait to see you. And in the meantime, stay safe. Thank you, ladies. Likewise.